Zeb, can you hear me? I can. All right. Okay. Um, I don't think oh, we're on oh, oh. Yeah, go ahead. I do not think we're on Facebook as yet, are we? Uh, I, I, I came through you via Facebook, not the YouTube, so I think you're the one who have to, um, as the host. I know, but I'm not seeing, my, I'm not seeing us on Facebook just yet. And neither, that's why I was asking. Okay, I think there was an issue. Okay. I think we're going to go on Facebook. Or, or, let's, or we just go straight to Facebook Live and you'll just link me in. You'll, 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 no, you'll no, send no. me in. We have to go through like I just know. I don't know what's the problem here. Just give me one second. Yeah. Choose destination. Facebook. Yeah.
All right. Um, yes, now. You should be on Facebook already. Let me tap in there. You should have been on Facebook a long time ago. But I think I can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. All right. And I didn't and I didn't choose the YouTube option. I pressed the Facebook option okay. to get to you. We're here. We're here. We're here. On Let's... Facebook? Yes. Okay. So let me find it so I can share it. Just uh, let me let me put it for everybody. I don't know what's wrong with my computer, man. My computer has been acting up. <laughs> you need a new one. <laughs> I do, I do. Edit audience. We're going in the public now, said. Yeah, oh. yeah, cool. I'll share it as soon as I. We're on. We're on. All right. Yeah, good evening, Dominica. Today's the 14th of March. 2021. We're here contending for Dominica. It's a beautiful evening in Dominica. And wherever you are, I hope it's well with you and that you had a beautiful day. You're having a very beautiful and gorgeous evening. And you're looking forward to interact here with me, your host, Joshua Francis, attorney at law and former parliamentary representative of the Rosa South constituency. Tonight, I'm here with the one Zed Lloyd. I'm joined with or by Zed Lloyd. Good evening, Mr. Lloyd, and how are you doing? Uh, good evening, Josh. Good evening to the audience. Josh, I need a tag on that, on that link first thing, so if you can give me a tag, that'd be nice. I don't see it yet. Um, it's nice to be here, pleasant. I hope we can. Thanks for giving us your time, and we can have a nice conversation on national issues regarding our country. Um, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, Zed, you raised uh, an issue. I think if you're on your Facebook page, you should be able to share the broadcast. But once again, let me welcome all of you who have decided to stop to discuss and contend issues in Dominica. We're happy to have you here. We're going to have a very interactive program. We wanted to share the broadcast. Share it, share it, share it. Zed, you should be able to share the broadcast if you are on your Facebook page. I am, and I'm not, I am, and it's not showed up yet. It has not, it should be showing up anytime from now. We are live. We are here with the world. The audience is public, and as such, you should be able to share the broadcast. Okay. I'm What's on it? your page. I'm on your page. It's not there yet also. All right. Well, you don't make an appearance anytime from now, but as okay. we, we already have we are with us, we want to welcome them. We want to let them know that we're happy they're here with us and we're looking forward to have a very interactive program. Of course, Zed, we have had a very exciting past week in Dominica. The, well, let's put the last two weeks in particular because we had this drill issue. Um, yeah. So whether you may want to touch on that issue. The <laughs> brutality issue. We also had the death of a gentleman from Kingsdale whilst in custody. That also is an issue. And more recently, we had this huge case coming from Caribbean Court of Justice in respect to treating and the jurisdiction of the magistrate court in adjudicating on matters of treating. And we have CBI to deal with. And of course, we cannot leave the audience without touching on some basic economics. I know that you have a passion for minimum wage. You would like to see that increase in Dominica. <laughs> Definitely. Poverty. You would like to see fair employment opportunities in Dominica amongst several things. So once again, let me welcome you for the audience. Thank you for joining us. And we're going to have a very interesting program. Zed, we'll be looking at the comments because we want to interact 
audience, keep in mind this program is really not our program, it's a people's program. I agree. So said, how, how is everything? How is New York? And Well, it's cold tonight, Josh. It's, the last couple of days have been kind of nice, but tonight, I don't know, there's a, there's like a, a Canadian breeze coming into the place. It's, it's, it's rough. It's like below 30s tonight in New York. All right. It's really cold. Nice evening to be inside and warm. <laughs> you know, uh, as you said, it's been an interesting two weeks, and um, I think maybe where we, I guess, where we can launch off from is from this um, CCJ ruling on, um, and we can take the conversation on another level. I, I think your legal expertise is very warranted in introducing that topic to our, to our audience at this time. Well, thank you, Zed. I would just um, follow up with respect to the CCJ case. I every Dominican would be aware or cognizant that there was a decision emanating from the jurisdiction of the Caribbean Court of Justice dealing with primarily the issue as to whether the magistrate court in Dominica has jurisdiction to hear treating matters. Of course, we are aware that three supporters of the United Workers Party held a complaint before the magistrate court in Dominica in Roosevelt's Carrot and the winning candidates in the 2014 elections. There were 15 successful Labour candidates. And the speaker, Antoine Defoe, deceased, bless his heart, Edin Cote Saint Val, and moving John Baptist, made a complaint and filed a complaint, filed a private criminal complaint against Roosevelt Skerritt and 14 other successful candidates in the general election of 2014, alleging that they were involved in treating. So when that complaint was filed, a magistrate issued summons for the defendants, that is reverse carried and orders to make an appearance before the magistrate in determination of whether they were guilty of treating or not. The gentleman, represented by Tony Astafan Sr. and other lawyers, filed a judicial review asking the High Court in Dominica to rule on whether the magistrate had exceeded his jurisdiction by issuing summons for the defendants to make an appearance before him. Mr. Asafan contended that the magistrate court does not have jurisdiction to deal with treating matters, which is, of course, an election matter. And in his mind, all election matters are to be dealt with only by the High Court of Dominica and of course, the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. Cara, who represented Mr. Antoine Defoe, Edin Cotsenval, and Moving John Baptist, responded that the magistrate court does have jurisdiction to ascertain the culpability and determination of whether somebody can be charged for a criminal offense or treated. Our local judge here, Justice Brooks, Justice Stevenson, made a ruling that the magistrate court did not or does not have jurisdiction to hear the matter. Of course, Cara appealed the matter, Cara appealed the matter because Justice Stevenson Brooks ruling, Justice Stevenson, I want to get it right, I think she wants to be referred to by Justice Stevenson and not Justice Stevenson Brooks. Yes, so our ladyship basically concluded that the summonses were issued for Mr. Skerritt and orders to make an appearance before the magistrate court has to be quashed and the criminal complaints had to be quashed. So that would have been the end of the matter. So in other words, we would not have had any matter in the magistrate court against Roosevelt Skerritt and orders in respect to the allegation of treating, whereby two concerts were held in Dominica in the minds of the complainants, that is, Antoine Defoe, deceased, Edin Cotsen Val, Moving John Baptist, those concerts were meant to corruptly influence them to vote for the Dominican Labour Party. But Ms. Schilling Ford did not accept the ruling of the leadership, Stevenson, Ms. Stevenson, and therefore Justice Stevenson, and therefore she appealed before the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal. 
and the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal reversed the decision of Justice Stevenson and recalled uh, or asked for the reissuance of the summons against the Mr. Stefan, who represented or who represents the Prime Minister. He then appealed the ruling of the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal decision before the Caribbean Court of Justice, which is the highest appellate court for Dominica. And the court had to determine who is right, whether Micheline Ford's argument that the magistrate court does have jurisdiction to hear a criminal complaint of treating, or whether Mr. Astafan was right, whereby he argued that the magistrate court did not have or does not have such jurisdiction to hear a criminal complaint of treating, rather it had to be heard before the High Court of Dominica prior the mode of election petition, which has to be done within 21 days after an election. The Caribbean Court of Justice, in a unanimous decision, favored the arguments of Ms. Cara Ford and her colleague. Um, I think there are a little background here. So yeah, I, 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 you finally came through. We're right. on. I got you. Definitely. All right. So the, the Caribbean Court of Justice had to make that determination and favored the arguments of Ford and Wayne Benjamin Marsh, whereby the, the Caribbean Court of Justice asked for the summons for the defendants to appear before the magistrate to be reissued. So uh, at a finality as far as whether the magistrate has jurisdiction, the Caribbean Court of Justice says, yes, the magistrate has jurisdiction to hear criminal complaints of treating. And therefore, the chief magistrate has to appoint a magistrate to hear the complaints of Mr. Senval and Mr. John Baptist. What it means, said, is once a magistrate is identified for that matter, someone will be issued for Mr. Skerritt, Roosevelt Skerritt and others to appear before a magistrate court in Roseau, the district of Roseau, to answer to the charge of treating. It means that Mr. Mervyn John Baptist and Erin Cosenval will take the witness stand and give their testimonies respectively as to why they are of the belief that Roosevelt Skerritt and others treated them with corrupt intent to influence them to vote for the Dominican Labour Party. So it is left to be seen, of course, the, com the complainants will have the liberty to call witnesses. And at the end of their case, the defendants, that is Roosevelt Skerritt and others, will answer to the evidence brought forth before the district court. So it's rather very interesting Post that situation, we have had senior counsel who lost the case, of course, suggesting that the director of public prosecution could nolly-pross or discontinue the private criminal action on the ground that the decision of the Caribbean Court of Justice has opened a floodgate for ordinary people, ordinary citizens to abuse the judiciary, whereby they will bring bogus and empty complaints, criminal complaints of treating before the magistrate court. And we have had a reaction from a number of us saying that the suggestion of senior counsel at this hour is inappropriate. It would be an insult against the people of Dominica who have a very keen interest in the matter and in the electoral process going forward. Of course, the judge brought the matter before the court to question the integrity of the electoral system. A number of have had concerns about the electoral process in Dominica. We believe that the system has been undermined, it has been corrupt, it has been commercialized, it has become a transaction, and the conscience of the people have been affected, the conscience of the people have been affected by corrupt electoral practices by the Dominica Labour Party, which is prepared to do anything to hold on to the reins of power in Dominica. So that's where we are, Zed. I'm sure you have your uh, taken. I'm not too sure whether you read the judgment on the review, and if you did, of course, you have several enunciations and submissions from the judges of the Court of Justice. Well, the, 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 um, the decision is a very long one in terms of documentation, um, but I, I think it's a victory for Dominica, 
for Dominica beyond the politics. I, I think we really need to get a sense of empowerment of our citizens in regard to the court system in Dominica. I think we've had a trajectory where the court just seems not to rule in 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 the favor of 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 the of the the, you know, the regular citizens, the regular folk. And I think that gives us an opportunity to start empowering local citizens beyond just this idea of who controls the society. So I think it's an awesome day for us in having that victory. But I want to, I wish we can do a little more forward thinking, Josh. I think, yes, the tree thin thing is a real issue, but I would like to think of how can we organize our electoral process to actually transcend that tree thin thing so it's not even an issue in future elections in, in Dominica. That is that is where I hope we can, uh, I would like us to talk a little bit about, about going there. All right, um, Zed, of course, you've been very philosophical. I'm not surprised that you have raised such an important intellectual issue. But before we challenge your question, let us look at the comments of a few of the followers here. Viva mm -hmm. Mamo contending for Dominica. We appreciate your presence. A gentleman who continues to do a phenomenal job on Facebook and other social media platforms in the enlightenment of our people. Um, Viva Mamo asks, uh, forgive my ignorance, but can the defendants request the attorneys to represent them before the magistrate without the defendants themselves showing up in court? Um, no Viva Mamo, a defendant himself, has to make an appearance. There are cases where may be excused or a matter may go ahead in his absence, but as far as the criminal jurisdiction is concerned, the defendant himself has to appear before the court for the matter to proceed. And I think this is what Bruce has carried. The Prime Minister of Dominica has been trying to avoid of course, it's embarrassing to make an appearance before court to answer to a charge of the treating is a corrupt practice. And this is what Roosevelt's carrots and others have to answer. I'm not too sure that if he, he is, he would have heard my response in respect to that. I see Clevin Mills, good evening, in the case and has not been proven. Clevin Mills, Decision of the Department of Justice, not in ventilation of whether it took place or not. It had to be So you don't have to fly ahead of yourself. And let me welcome the listeners and followers here. So, Zed, yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, J J Josh, yes. like I said, I see the full, you know, I. I like I said, I'm happy that the decision happened, but I'm worried. I'm worried that that very avenue might, 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 might come back to bite us down the road. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about that. And so I, I hope we can, we, can, um, we can look at the treating thing from in, in, in a futuristic kind of manner, where as we come upon this issue of electoral reform, that we can use that avenue to make sure that we can treat this thing in a manner that cancels that kind of problem in future elections in Dominica. I think this, this is my concern. Well, is that, are you suggesting that the offense of treating should be repudiated? It should be expunged from our laws? I, I, I think the election laws that we, that we construct should prepare, should organize the, 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 the process of voting in regards to diasporans, which is really primarily where that issue is, in a manner that cancels out that issue of treating to vote in Dominica. I think, well, I think we can circumvent all of these things if we organize a proper law, legal approach towards, towards moving forward in terms of our voting construct and, and, and the ability of diasporans to vote in Dominica. Well, when you look at it from a superficial point of view or mechanical point of view, that is possible. But the organic fiber discussion here is more than the diaspora voters. Based on the law, treating essentially is the act of giving entertainment, giving food, a service, or some other article 
with the corrupt intent to influence that person, whether by a politician and or his agents, to support a given that politician and or his political party. So includes not just diasporans and providing a ticket for them to come to Dominica to vote. It includes politicians and agents who give people money with the request for them to vote for themselves and all the masters and all party. Well, well, Josh, that is what that, that circumvents that exactly what I'm trying to reach out to in terms of if we organize our, our, our political, our election laws, for instance, through camp campaign finance reform and all these things. If we organize this thing in a comprehensive manner, I think we can circumvent all these problems. Well, that's, yeah, the ideal situation would be for us to create a construct that will circumvent these problems. But as you know, this current government is not interested in the engineering of election laws in Dominica to facilitate the elimination of such election and corruption because the system itself is built on a pillar of lies and deception and corruption. This Dominican Labour Party has been engaged in electoral practices to the point where they have attempted to eliminate the issues, the election legal provisions of treating and bribery. Remember in 2017, had it not been the Committee of Concerned Citizens protests near the Parliament, today probably we would not have that law on our books. Yeah, well, you come you come to the meat of the matter, Josh, and which is one of the things that I I I, I continually complain about. We keep having these conversations around our politics from a perspective of Roosevelt scary, and I understand that's the tradition. But um, we need to shift. We need to, we need to turn that conversation around. We need to start having it from a position, a posture of empowerment of our citizens, empowerment of our citizens, and I think. I think it's something that concerns me in terms of the legal, the legal fraternity, and I applaud you and, and this new and loyal group for taking a stand. And you know, I, I applaud people like Cara. But I think that is where we, at this juncture, as important as this ruling is and the opportunity it gives, I think we need to be more forward thinking, especially from that legal fraternity, that we need to. We, I think the legal fraternity can mobilize the citizens much more appropriately than even the political party on this issue, especially given the level of polarization that we have. Someone like Clara, I listened to the afternoon, and she asked her about leadership, and she said, well, maybe I might consider leadership politically in the future. And that's the thing. Everybody that gets confronted with the option of leadership, they think of it politically. I think we have to forget about political leadership as the option of leadership to what is going on in Dominica for a minute. I think we need to see citizen leadership. And I think Clara is really in the right spot to, to be a, for, a forward front leader in mobilizing the citizens so that we can stand to use the spirit and the corrupt government in a manner that can enable us to pass the appropriate laws to just cancel this nonsense from our, from our society as a democracy. So I think that's what that's where I think it is. People who are popular, who are respected, like lawyers, like like Clara, like like she is, and others can lead that movement. The sing singlers, the you yourself, and others, but that wheelchair. I think this collective of lawyers should become a more public forum group at this juncture to lead that movement, so that our citizens can become mobilized beyond just a political organization and challenge the government in appropriate manner too. Let us deal with this thing in this manner. I think we should be ahead of the courts. We should even be ahead of, of Justice Byron, who's coming to deal with those things. I think that is what I would. I wish we can do at this juncture. And when we get that ruling, whatever it is, we will have already circumvented all the negatives that can come out of this process and, and have a proper electoral process in Dominica. That, I think, is the bigger challenge I would love to see happening on, on, in my own life. I said I'm going to respond to that, but before I do so, let me just welcome Judith Gist. I uh, yeah. hope that you're a good evening, Judith. Bernard Allen is also here with us. He says good night. 
and he said Dominica is pregnant with issues. Good to have more options for the discussions to take place. Good vibes. Thank you, Bernard Allen. We also have David Joseph who has sent greetings. We want to say uh, good evening to David Joseph. And uh, Jan Perez, she says, or he says, I'm not too sure, I think that's Janine Perez, that person is listening. Chris Bubunu is locked. Uh, David Joseph treating has not been proven because that is yet to begin. Thank you, David. That's a point which I made to Clevin Mills, who says that election offenses will soon fall under the review of the director of public prosecution to avoid abuse of the process. And Mills, uh, the criminal offense of treating is under the review of the director of public prosecution, hence the reason why senior counsel Tony Astapan suggested that the DPP could nolly pros the current matter against Roosevelt's carried on orders. And yes, the acting DPP, Ms. Shema Darambo, does have the constitutional power to nolly cross the matter, but I doubt she would even consider nolly crossing that matter given the public importance of the treating case before the court. It would be an, a very unpopular decision, and I would say that the nation would not take it lightly if she were to go down that path. Um, David Joseph says, abuse of what process? The only abuse has been by Roosevelt, Maynard Skerritt, and his bunch of criminals parading as politicians. Alex Irish is in with us as citizens inside. We have Darius Lecon, Lecon. Clevin Mills, election offenses fall under the review of the DPP now. Yes, that is correct. Uh, Clevin Mills again, the amendment only provided to codify the offenses of treating and bribery. More transportation of vote is the more transportation of vote of a vote is not bribery. Of course, that is debatable, Clevin Mills. No, we, we, he says we all know that. <laughs> that is not correct, Clevin Mills. And um, of course, we are Chris Bugunu and um, making some comments here. But um, that just to go back to the whole question of leadership and the decision coming from the Caribbean Court of Justice. I just say, you referred to Cara. You made a reference to a response she gave to a question. I, I'm not too sure whether it's by Matt or some host on Q95 last week. Yeah. And she said that she was currently not interested in, politi in politics or political leadership. And I think she answered very well. She went on to say that She's, she is in a better position to contribute to the people of Dominica where she is right now. Um, so to tackle your question, she has taken up leadership. She has taken up leadership in her field of advocacy, and thus far she has had a very positive impact on the jurisprudence of Dominica. She has been able to lead members of the opposition to a victory on a question of whether the magistrate has the jurisdiction to hear the criminal offense of treating. So she's a leader, and you're right to say that our leadership does not always have to be under the umbrella of politics. All of us must make a contribution from whichever angle, from whichever civil society, whichever group, from whichever opportunity we have. So she has done a good job and she will continue to lead in her field until such time. She may evolve into a full-time politician sometime in the future, but for now, she definitely has my support to focus on her legal practice, not do like me, who sacrificed my legal practice for a number of years to venture the political arena full-time. Well, well, that's what I'm saying, George. She doesn't have to, she doesn't have to go your route. She doesn't have to sacrifice her legal profession to go politically. I'm saying we need people to start looking at the, when, when the leadership thing comes up, we need to start looking at it not just like an automatic, you know, political posture. It's the other postures that are missing in the society. The other postures that are easier to reach the people and talk to the people. Can you imagine someone like Clara going on a, on a public campaign for this electoral reform issue? You, you know the kind of galvanizing that could take place in the country? You know what the kind of mass movement it could build? <laughs> let, me, let me just let me just inform and yeah. let me encourage you. Yeah. As you mentioned I'm part of a lawyers group referred refers to referred to as a committee of concerned lawyers yeah. and also a member of that group. And yeah. we have in a decision to take our radio program on the road. As yes. Having 
this radio program on Q95 every other Tuesday. Yes, I... Of the program basically is to enlighten and heighten people's understanding of the laws of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Okay. It's meant to advise people on what are their rights. So we're going to get into the different communities of Dominica. I want to announce that the first community which will benefit from our venture of taking the program on the road will be the Newton or Harlem community. Yes. <laughs> Thank uh, you. From Hall <laughs> Plaza for the CCL, Committee of Concert Lawyers. Yes. <laughs> what you're thinking has already been crystallized. <laughs> and that is going to be yes, the very uh, That's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> and just to add, just to add um, Karen Orders and Marsh win have successfully dealt with one issue. There are several other issues which will True. be dealt with in Dominica, in the courts of Dominica. Um, CL, that is Committee of Concern Lawyers, is, is doing some research led by the to take the, the CBI. Yes. Citizenship by investment. That MMC relationship. With... <laughs> As you rightly said, the MMC relationship, we seem to have a number of questions. And I want to commend Viva Mamo for keeping that issue alive and for taking time to study the issue and to share his information. Yes. Some people have not appreciated the enormity of what appears to be a Ponzi scheme. Um, there's a lot, of, there are a lot of questions to be desired in regards to the relationship to the contract between the Commonwealth of Dominica and MMCE. So our group will be challenging that issue. We have land acquisition issues. We have duty-free. As you know, in Dominica, we have this practice of if you support the government, you can get duty-free. That is something that we're looking at. We will be looking at environmental legal issues amongst many other legal issues because that's really the purpose of our group. We are making yes. a from a legal point of view. Yes. George, that's what's been missing, you know, George. That's what's been missing, you know. And um, you have a comment you're watching? You hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, that's what's been missing, you know. When you look at all the other, even, you don't even have to go afar, afar. I mean, there's other Caribbean societies. You see, you see the process of struggle and you see where the legal element comes in. And once you see the legal fraternity he gets empowered in the struggle, the change happens <laughs> because and especially in dominica it is really critical because we are so polarized pol politically that we need some neutral voices we need some neutral voices and so that legal fraternity there is where the is the immediate way when he belongs to this but just coming on the legal protocol and having that that platform that is valid by your what you have done in the case of winning the cases and setting the precedent for justice yeah, you, you can cross that divide a whole lot easier than the politician can cross that divide. Mm -hmm. So I think we just, we arrived at a really good juncture. It, it's, going be, it's going to be a whole different future if we can crystallize this, this, um, this involvement of the fraternity in our, in our whole you know, political process. I'm very happy to hear that. Yes, I'm glad that you are happy to hear that. But I just want to ask some points in respect to the decision of the Caribbean Court of Justice in that yeah. matter which we are discussing for the benefits of our followers. Yeah. Uh, they are on the broadcast and we promise that we will deal with that matter. So we're going to just touch on one or two things. Um, just to repeat myself, before the Caribbean Court of Justice, there's a that the magistracy has jurisdiction, or let's put it this way, had jurisdiction to hear the criminal offense are treating, and the Caribbean Court of Justice answered in the affirmative. Of course, a, the judgment is for a lawyer. It's not that thick. I think it's just um, it's like 40 pages. An ordinary person, it may be um, a huge judgment because who, who <laughs> is judgment? It's not the most exciting thing. <laughs> <laughs> there are um, 56 paragraphs. 
Is that 40 pages? So I'm just going to highlight a few things here, you know. <clears throat> so paragraph 12 for those who have looked at the judgment. And I, and I urge everybody to really look at the judgment. You can go on the Caribbean Court of Justice website and name of any of the defendants or the, well, any of the names of the appellants or the respondents, and you will get the case. All right? So there were four main points that both is argued. And they were, number one, whether two parallel systems of arbitration existed under the Elections Act, under the jurisdiction of the magistrate, and under the jurisdiction of the High Court to try treating the two parallel modes of trial points. Remember what I said, so um, Z, that Tony Astafan, senior counsel, argued that only the High Court could deal with election matters. Election yes, matters. yes, yes. And Kara argued that both the High Court and the Magistrate Court can deal with election offenses. And the Caribbean Court of Justice agreed. Yeah. Because Tony was suggesting that for the Magistrate to deal with election offenses, it would be inconsistent with the Constitution of Dominica. And the Caribbean Court of Justice said, no, 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 no. <laughs> the offense of is exclusive. Well, it can be dealt with both by the magistracy and, and the high court. All right, so that 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 um, argument settled in favor of Kara and Win. And the second issue was whether the summary trial of the offense or treating was consistent with the constitutional provisions for giving the high court jurisdiction to determine the valid, validity of elections and the composition of the House of Assembly. Now, that was Tony's argument. Yeah. The Caribbean Court of Justice argued that, and that was again in favor of Cara, that the offense of treating did not deal with the validity of elections. It had to do with the criminality of the offense and the culpability of a person. And it's not just politicians who can be brought before a court for treating. Anyone, That's deep. That's deep. Anyone, anyone <laughs> of us can be brought before the magistrate court for treating. It's not just politicians. Yeah. A politician. Okay, and um, number three, whether the decades of election law decisions by Caribbean courts had confirmed the exclusive jurisdiction of the High Court to try by way of election petition all electorally corrupt practices such as treating that could have the effect of altering the composition of the House, the weight of jurisprudence points. Of course, the Court of Justice disagreed with Mr. Asafan, senior mm -hmm. and whereby, a matter of fact, the career court of justice was a little bit harsh to Mr. Asafan, but he came with quite a number of cases that were, uh, you know, well, let, let's just say, um, inapplicable to the matter before the court. False precedent. Yeah, it was <laughs> a false precedent, but they were irrelevant. Yeah, irrelevant. Yeah, so a lot of his work really went under the bridge. A number of the cases which he cited were immaterial, irrelevant, and insignificant to the issues before the Caribbean Court of Justice. And that, that essentially says his premise was, was just was very thin, eh? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> based on a commonsensical point of view, I just knew that Carrie was going to be successful. Yeah. And Justice Stevenson took the decision whereby she agreed with senior counsel, a number of us in the legal fraternity had some concerns because the House of Assembly Act, the provision which was before the court, or which is before the court, um, is clear. It says summary offenses. And it actually gives the sentence and it gives the, the, the penalty which is associated with that offense. Wow. The offense could only mean before the magistrates. And further, as I said, it gave the punishment which is associated with that it's offense. Crime. <laughs> and there are other jurisdictions with similar provisions, and Cara was successful in digging up some of these um, cases to the court that Mr. Asafan was wrong, and of course the Caribbean Court of Justice agreed. So really, the case is premised on 
these arguments. So, for example, if you read from paragraph 13, it deals with the two parallel modes of trial points. We're not going to go in details. We are not before a court of law. We just want to keep this very simple to help everyone to understand what went down before the Caribbean Court of Justice and what are the ramifications of the judgment going forward. And probably that's where we're going to take the discussion set. Now that the Caribbean Court of Justice has taken that decision that the magistrate uh, treating matter, what does that mean for Dominica? And what does that mean for the political climate of Dominica? Some people are very positive. They believe that that will have seismic impact on the political composition of Dominica, given that there are quite a number of allegations of bribery and treating by the Dominica Labour Party. With that, yeah. decision, we expect a number of cases to go before the magistrate court. And at some point, somebody will be held guilty for treating. And if he or she does, and that person is a parliamentarian, of course, we know what would be the consequence. And that is one of the reasons why Mr. Asafan, and I just took note that cleverly saying that people abuse the system, whereby many people could take frivolous action against a politician who they do not like or against somebody they do not like for treating. Now, that is just a mere assumption and exaggeration because that may not necessarily be true. In any event, if a frivolous action is taken before the court, the court will deal with it accordingly. If I take a matter against you, Z, and it's not making sense, once I give the evidence, you on your own without an attorney can, can submit no case. You can give a no case submission and the matter can be struck off. And if I wrongfully brought you before the court, then you can sue me for yeah. wrongful prosecution or for malicious prosecution. So the idea that Mr. Astafan and people like Clevin Mills are pushing basically is to try to encourage the government to A, go into parliament to expunge that, that treating, in other words, to either take it up from the books or to find a way to legitimize it as they attempted to do three years ago. Yeah. And of course, they also suggested that the DPP, who can, in fact, nullify the matter for her to go ahead to nullify the matter. Yeah, Josh. Like I said, I think it's a it's a very um it it's a very it's it's a it's a hill. It's it's a slope. It's a slope. It's a slope. And and like I said, what we can ensure as citizens to ensure that we get the benefit as a nation of that movement is mobilization of our citizens, raising their legal quotient, their IQ. Like you guys said, you're about to do. I think those are the things that are critical in that regard. If we just leave it up to the court, the same, a lot of the same things will happen. These cases will languish in the courts and don't get called for a very long time, making their judgment almost irrelevant in our process. So that is something that we have to address if this is going to be a magistrate process. And I don't know how you, I don't know how that happens if you're not in power and you can make that law pass, except in through citizenship ag agitation and, 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 and movement. I don't know what your option is as a legal profession, as a lawyer. Maybe you can explain that to us, but that is one of my major concerns. The fact that we do not have a procedure, a process that ensures that these electoral um, um, problems and issues are addressed in a timely manner so that it reflects importance in terms of time and the election and the results of our election. Well, as far as the criminal um, offense or treating is concerned, under the Constitution of Dominica, all criminal matters must be heard within a reasonable time. But what is a reasonable time? Well, <laughs> reasonable in respect to the administrative capacity of the court, ability of magistrates, behavior of the advocates conducting the matter. Because as you know, sometimes we as defense counsel, when we have matters in a magistrate court, we may have high court matters running parallel. On some given days when we are to appear before the magistrate, we may appear before a judge and as such a matter has to be adjourned. So when you have these adjournments resulting from the behavior of the defense counsel, whether intentionally or not, and or the prosecution not being ready, that affects the efficiency in which the magistrate deals with the matter. Because magistrates sometimes may be absent. 
or there may be some administrative situation that may affect the rapidity with which the matter is heard. But we are hoping that this treating matter will be dealt with expeditiously within a reasonable period of time, let us say within six months to nine months, should the aggrieved party desire to appeal, and at the time he or she appeals before Eastern Caribbean, they give the losing party an opportunity to appeal further before the Caribbean Court of Justice without having to wait for another five years for the finality that matter. How long it took from the filing of the complaint in 2015 to six years. So by the time the matter is heard before the magistrate court, we may have to decide to appeal. We are hoping that the, the, the matter can be dealt with expeditiously because Take another what else happens then. We have 15 defendants and eight of the defendants have exited the political arena. Yeah. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. And, and that's why I say, like, like we have, we, that's why I say, though, no, we as the citizens have to, in, in, in some measure, it's not a matter of disrespecting the courts or whatever, but I think we have to em you know, implore on, 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 on the administration and the society a need for treating this urgently. We have to find some way around this. Either the electoral board, for instance, gets an added budget set of um, uh, monies that are catered towards dealing with, um, with, with these situations so they can allocate these finances, have a judge, you know, have this thing set up. We, we have to find some, we have to, we have to organize some ways around this practically. Well, again, that is left to the discretion of the judges as far as election petitions are concerned. Um, mm. I mean, some people will say it is unfair to compare these small island developing states such as Dominica with advanced countries such as the United States. But if you took note of what happened after the election in the United States of America a few months ago, you realize that Trump and his team were able to get election petitions before the court and heard within 48 hours. Even as far as the high, even as far as the high court. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's very ludicrous that in 2021, we have after an election petition taken before the court, and it takes five years, six years, seven years for it to be heard. I mean, that's really unacceptable. And the framers of the Constitution and of the laws understood the urgency which the validity of an election should be held. And as such, that is why they may have suggested that 21 days after the election, every petition should be filed before the court. And therefore, it would depend on the judge to deal with the matter expedit expeditiously in the interest of the people. But that is not a practice we have been seeing. So let us hope that those responsible will take note and they will deal with the matter, the manner in which the framers of the laws were concerned and intended. But within the framework of the of, of, of the of, of the laws, George, that are existing right now, in terms of these recommendations and things, are there any legal challenges that we can forward into the court to ensure that this thing gets addressed, this issue of time and judgment? Well, I think there is a case, um, I'm not too sure exactly from which jurisdiction, but there is a case where a litigant challenged the court on the ground that the court had caused him some loss and damages because of the excessive or inordinate delay in the adjudication of the matter. Yeah. So there is some legal recourse, but in Dominica, you find that people do not want to challenge a system. And that is why we are encouraged with this case which we are discussing because we hope it serves as an impetus for ordinary citizens to their concerns before the court and let the court determine whether they're right or wrong. Yeah. I guess it's how we've been, we, you know, we've always treated the court as something almost like British society treats royalty, you know, something, something away from us, you know, that is just supreme and untouchable and unreachable. Right. And, and that's why I'm happy that 
the legal fraternity is reaching to the citizens or to make them realize that you actually have a shorter path to the courts than you think you actually have. You know, and so I, I, am, I am very happy about that. And maybe what maybe might be a good idea is to get one to citizens to file something similar in, in regards to that kind of that case. And, and you know, and because we have to move the courts and how do we move the courts? We have to move the courts by filing briefs that challenge things. We need some Thurgood Marshall kinds of movements in Dominica for a minute, Josh. Yeah, well, said there are lawyers who may be prepared to challenge a system, but yeah. Hearing advocacy can be very demanding. And when you are running a practice, your sole practitioner, as an example, as in my case, yeah. you know, as much as you may want to test the system, you have bills to pay. And therefore, you can only do so much. Because if you focus on pro bono work, then you may suffer. You will suffer, especially where you're challenging the system, because the system itself does not help you. And when you go on a frolic of challenging it, it can make things more difficult for you. Hence, you have to be sacrificed. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say we are absent lawyers who are not prepared to challenge a system. It's just a matter of getting or giving the support to those lawyers so that they can do so. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have to move, we have to um, deal with that. Josh, can we um can we touch on Viva Mamo's um, assessment on that CDI? Because yeah, I think yeah. we can connect it to this conversation. Yeah. Um, we'll be going there. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll be going there, but probably we should just um, sum up on our discussion about that case and the ramifications for Dominica. I see Viva Mamo uh, just posted something. Well, of course, Clever Mills has been taking part. That's yeah, well. that's, can we have been control now on board? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you should address the substance of the case. Elections should be required by the DPP to prosecute. What we have we are not here to discuss the substance of the case for the mandatory court. We only dealt with the substance which was before the Caribbean Court of Justice, and that is to know whether the mandatory court has jurisdiction to hear criminal offenses of treating. And of course, the court answered in the affirmative. As Viva Mamu said, the judgment is very simple to read and it's very short. All right. Um, Chris Bugunu, you are mixing apples and oranges, brother. The election itself is different from treating and bribery. And Clem goes on to say Joshua is not addressing the substance of the case here. I think I read that. Let's see what Viva Mamu is saying. Josh, could you explain the difference between a matter brought by writ, a summons, motion, and petition, insofar as the degree of expectation of the, the promptness and or importance of the consideration of a matter before the courts. Um, usually, petition matters are dealt with, usually, from my experience, um, it's just like you have, for example, a first petition. All right? Um, petitions usually are dealt with much faster than a, a writ or summons, which is dealt with all kinds of, for example, you have the civil procedure rules, which governs the manner in which these writs are brought before the court, how the case holds, case management. So it tends to take longer. It is more rigorous, it is more demanding. Um, petition usually are done expeditiously. I, I was using the example of a divorce. It's usually done by petition. Um, election petitions, um, again, supposed to be dealt with expeditiously, but for some reason or the other, we have not been seeing that in Dominica. <laughs> um, we usually have the motions of the constitution, so you hear of a constitutional motion. That too can take some time because the rigor of the trial involves um, gets you to distill the issues and then it's, the case is adjourned, you have to come back before the court, you have to do all kinds of different stuff. So it, it tends to take more time, but really, um, if we check the fact that when we take an election petition before the court, we are questioning the validity of an election. One would expect that matters to be dealt with quite quickly. Unfortunately, that has to be the case. Moving forward, let us hope that happens. All right, thank you, um, I'm not sure whether I dealt I believe um, we have Master here. Good night, Master. Oh, Bruno, I am here. 
Check in the Vibes group program. Yes, we're just summing up on the uh, mm -hmm. for the justice. I'm going to let um, Zed, do you think that case we just gave the justice that treating matter, jurisdiction matter, um, has any performed or fundamental impact on Dominica? I, I think, I think it, it does, but I think that the, 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 the joy with which we have approached it, we, I think we have to temper it some because you see. The fact that that this, I mean, a magistrate court, I mean, is cool and, and all that, but right at, at that level, Josh, you have you have a lower standard of, of justice. I mean, it is not said, but I think it's inherent in that process. And and so I am I am worried. I am worried that 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 judgment might be easily maneuvered and meandered in in, in the wrong direction in going that route. I am not know if I'm valid in saying that, but that is that is what I feel. I think I think at a at, at at a high court level, I mean, yes, you have you have high court judges who are you know, as we've seen in Dominica, but I think the the, the the demand that is placed on that high court judge and and the process by which a, a case is brought in, the the, the 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 before case assessment, you know, deciding whether you know something is valid, and looking at evidence and everything. I think I personally trust that avenue a whole lot more than just the magistrate on, on the level of the court in that process. I, me personally, not in regard to Anthony Astefan, but in looking at how justice in terms of the procedures and the processes and the bar that is set. Um, you can answer me on that before I move forward. What do you think of that? Yeah, well, you have been calling for some kind of board or some kind of authority to assist in the timeline of adjudication really and keep in mind the doctrine of separation of powers yeah where the judiciary runs independently from the executive and the legislature and therefore the issue of time management cases really is left to, to the discretion of the court so it is the court itself that has to improve its administrative system to facilitate the quick review of cases, particularly cases which runs to the life of a citizen. Because in as much as some of us may be nonchalant about these election petitions, should a serious election petition, as we have had, go before the court, and there is an iota of a possibility that the election offenders can be held responsible. It can affect the composition of parliament. Yes. I want a court to make a ruling on the validity of an election five years after the alleged offense, because by then it would be absolute, it would be useless. But the volume that is already, that is necessary there in the magistrate process, is not already something that is going to create a, 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 a sort of a, length of length length of time in terms of, of addressing that case in vis-a-vis -vis the, the the high court the high court process which has a, a lesser volume of cases and those things so is not something that we that we should be concerned about well um we are looking at two different jurisdictions here um this matter i'm mean, using this as an example this matter with with um adding adding court saint val and moving john baptist so mm -hmm are going before the magistrate court. Let us hope that the chief magistrate will appoint a magistrate to deal with this matter, and by next week latest, summons will be issued to the defendants to appear before the magistrate court within the next four weeks. Uh, so here, that, and I'm glad you answered my question because that's where anyone wanted us to go. Which comes back again to citizenship involvement in ensuring that the court acts. I take the Guyana issue, for instance. Mm -hmm. The agitation by, by, by citizens in Guyana was, was very instrumental in the courts and, and the CCJ and, and, and all these justices and all this movement taking place in a very timely and urgent manner in Guyana. Granted, the judgment took some time, and that's understood. 
But the fact that the courts understood that the citizens were agitated enough about the issue facing them forced the courts to address Guyana in a very urgent manner. Mm -hmm. And so I think it comes back to what I'm trying to say again. Mobilization of the citizenry is very critical in getting the court to act in an urgent manner on our, on our, on our, on our behalf. Well, um, let's put it this way, said um, the system has taken advantage of the citizenry in many respects. You have people like yourself, Viva Mamo, and myself, to name a few, who are interested in how the system operates. And therefore, we are looking at the system with our eyes wide open, our ears are wide open, and our mouths are prepared to give words when necessary. But generally, it would appear that people are subdued and people are not interested in what's happening. And therefore, the system gets away with inefficiency. The system gets away with offenses. The system even abuses, abuses the nation because where you have a matter which is supposed to determine the validity of, and of parliament, it's six years or five years after, that's really inexcusable. But nobody cares. Nobody cares. But if we cared and we understood what is happening, understand what is happening, we probably could agitate and put the feet of those responsible in the fire. And therefore, they would understand the urgency in dealing with matters of importance to the nation. Yeah, it goes back to the thing again, George. We've been treating everything regarding government as something that has to be taken care of by the politician. Yeah. That's why I say I'm happy that the fraternity, legal fraternity, you guys are understanding and going to meet the people and empowering them and letting them know their rights. Because that, I think, has been the issue. The people are so in that culture, in that kind of mentality that this is the politician's business. This right. is a politician right. issue, and so we leave it to the politicians. And in Dominica, because we have this kind of polarized situation, it is very disadvantageous to anybody else but the ruling party. So I think, given that we're trying now, and this movement is on to mobilize citizens in terms of their legal rights and what they can do, I think that is what has been missing so that that movement of, of mass amongst the people can take place so they can realize, you know what we can say? This is our election process. We need to act our own, and we're going to start making some noise in the society and starting to gather on these courts and let these judges know that we need to act on these cases urgently. I think that is the component that we need to add to this fire right now. And Brother Bruno called and the CCM brothers, I hope you guys are listening, and Brother Alim, it is time to go to work, brothers. It is time to go to work. We need a united front to begin mobilizing the people so that we can ensure the court understands that we're not going to wait on this too much longer. We're not going to wait on this too much longer. I think that is what is missing for these justices to understand that justice has to be carried out, not just carried out, but carried out in a timely manner on our issues. Yes, it must not only be done, but it must be seen to be done. Exactly. And within a reasonable time and not inordinate delay, as has happened in Dominica a number of times. But yeah. this is really means that we have to plant more seeds of education to enlighten people because what we really have to cloak the nation with is education. That's the power. Once people have that knowledge, then they will understand what you're talking about. They will see the parameters within your construct and they will prepare to follow you and other leaders in making demands to make society better. But when you have people in a state of false consciousness and leaders encourage them to stay, stay, stay asleep, then it's more difficult to really enlighten such a people, and therefore the system gets away. But as we educate, we empower and we enlighten, all of a sudden you find more people being illuminated and coming out to be part of the action to get better. Yeah. It's all about yeah. Let me just look at a few comments here before we move to the next topic, because yeah. we um, <laughs> be enjoying this jurisprudence issue, and time has gone by very quick. We, we want to touch on the CBI and we yeah. look at the mastery work that uh, Viva Mamo has placed on the uh, Facebook platform. A very important topic. We want to touch on that tonight before we end. But I just want to pay attention to Chandra Senval. She said, hi, Josh. Um, there are, are there enough magistrate courts in Dominica in St. Kitts there was just a completion of another magistrate court building to deal with the backlog of cases. 
Well, probably we do have enough magistrates. We have several districts. We have a magistrate court in Grand Bay, where currently geographically it is located in Pitchness since Hurricane Maria. We have several magistrate courts in Roseau. We have a magistrate court in St. Joseph, one at Portsmouth, um, Vicars, Marigot, Wesley, Cassibrus, La Plaine. So we have courts in different districts, but we do have a backlog. I must say from my own experience over the past couple of years, we have seen a significant improvement in the determination of matters before the magistrate court. And there are a couple of magistrates who are more efficient than others. They show up on time. They do not mess around. They really call on the prosecution to take cases before them and to be on time because sometimes the prosecution is not ready. Sometimes defense counsel keeps asking for adjournments. So magistrates are more lenient than others. Overall, I think we do have enough magistrates. We do have enough magistrate courts. Um, I think it's just an attitude in the, in the magistracy that has to improve. And, and we have seen an improvement. And let us just hope moving forward we'll continue to see improvements. I see here uh, Chandra also asking, whatever happened to the online petition to have Bernie Stevens relocated to another jurisdiction? I don't have an answer to that, of course. Well, I could answer to that, Josh. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and some people might not be happy, but it's glad that we get to talk about it. The issue was raised. Um, we got a lot of online petitions. And then what happened is we had to get a lot of signatures in Dominica because quite a number of the citizens do not participate in online issues. They had a problem reading and accessing the file and, and working with it. It was daunting to them. So we organized the on the ground um, mission towards that, that, um, that petition. And that was challenging. And one of the reasons it was very challenging and, and, and it's sad, but we have to deal with it. It was because it was pushed forward by Zed. One of the reasons that the, the opposition movement did not embrace that, that, that petition in the mind that they should have embraced the petition. And that is one of the things that I want to just touch a little, the short sightedness of political um, 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 polarization in Dominica. People are, 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 they're so, they're so, you know, individual and personalistic in, in addressing politics that they, they, they forget, they don't already focus on the message, they focus on the messengers. So if the messenger is one who's critiquing your radio, is challenging your policies and really coming at you when they think you're wrong, even they support you, but just the fact that you challenge, you find a sort of aggressive and, and, and negative nature towards whatever it is that you are trying to do in terms of the political process. And so the opposition movement did not embrace that petition in the manner that they should have embraced that petition. So we had a few thousand votes and we sent the petition in, but just like the court system I'm talking about and the people in Acton, if a court, something is sent to a justice in, 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 in St. Kitts, a body, and there is no sense of movement on the ground politically, actively, citizenry-wise, to make them realize that, you know what, there's a serious movement in Dominica that is concerned about Justice Bernie Stevenson, and we have to address it. So there was not the physical, empirical component to the petition to make it an effective petition. So you may have signatures going to a, a court, going to a body, but if the body doesn't get a sense of urgency from the people who are, are talking about this situation, nothing is going to happen about your petition. So like I said, the petition was sort of backstabbed in a way. It was sort of backstabbed in a way because people have these kinds of things and you know, you are, this person has to be involved to fight to work or that person. So we actually fight against ourselves. You see, don't keep every day. The bus drivers call, they have a problem. Supporters call and say, well, hello, the bus drivers. They were supporting the thing. The nurses have a problem. People come and say, hello, the nurses. They were. You cannot win a struggle, a civic struggle with that kind of mentality. You don't have to agree with someone to work with them collectively for our solution. And I hope moving forward, we can start practicing that a little better and put these personal petty little things aside. Learn to take arguments and critiques with a more objective and open mind. And we could have removed Bernie Stevenson if we had a more aggressive and, you know, there were workers' programs on Thursday night that would not even promote the petition. For your own interest, uh, you have a, a justice that you're convinced is not acting in your favor. And here is a movement to try to get a petition going. 
you had 13,000 voters per se. We're supposed to get 10, 20, 15,000 people voting on that, on that petition easily. So, like I said, the personalization of politics in Dominica is also hindering the opposition movement in Dominica. And people need to start to take a critique more objectively and less personally. Because sometimes when someone is critiquing you, they're not critiquing you to put you down. They're just trying to tell you, act, act. And I want to just tell those folks, man, I know I come out hard sometimes, but before I come out hard, I talk soft. Let us forget these personal things, man. We all are in the same road. Take the critique more objectively and let us work with it in an objective way. We could have had a bigger difference with that petition if there was a more collusive kind of kind of attitude on behalf of the whole opposition movement in regards to Justice Bernie Stevenson. All right, thank you, Zed. I, I will keep my response to your response very briefly. <laughs> you say that um, why is some people want to see the back of Justice Stevenson? There are people who like Justin Stevenson. Yeah. So you have different views, different perceptions, and time will heal and cure the <laughs> that is in the system once we continue to advocate and agitate for better Dominica. And as you say, hopefully we'll unite better and we'll get better results. But once again, I just want to thank those who are here with us on this broadcast. This is Contending for Dominica. Today is the 14th of March, 2021. With me, Ed Lloyd, and we are here analyzing issues of national importance in the Commonwealth of Dominica. We have explored the case which has just descended from the Caribbean Court of Justice in regards to the question of whether the magistrate court has jurisdiction to hear election uh, treating and of course that was answered in the affirmative we want to move on to another topic but before so let me just highlight some which have been placed on the platform um, let me thank you for part your participation and let me urge you to share the page share the page so that somebody else can benefit from the discussion here of course we do have mr z lloyd making his contribution he's known to be very independent in his thinking and very philosophical in his an, an analysis. And we're happy to have him here. I see Viva Mamo saying, good response, Josh. Think by design petitions are meant to be dealt with priority expeditiously by the High Court over motions and writs. And the reason that a challenge to an election must be dealt with expeditiously as it is a petition in the court. The issue of reasonable time is for the court to determine by case law Suggest within six months for such cases. Um, thank you, Viva. We have Peter Carbon, a former parliamentary representative of the Wesley constituency and Minister of Agriculture in the Commonwealth of Dominica, and a student gentleman who continues to make his contribution to Dominica. We sure. urge him to stay healthy. And though he is physically away from Dominica, his love for Dominica has not uprooted his love for the people. And he says here, if a political party knows that they are able to purchase an election through bribery and treating, they have no interest in the improvement of the livelihood of the people. And, and so that goes back to the point that we have been making because really the Dominican Labour Party would not want to keep laws on the book, laws that are adverse to its legacy. Because really uh, the Labour Party objective is to stay into government first and then the people. And it appears that the Labour Party is prepared to do almost anything and everything to stay in power. Yeah, so, and George, and George, George, just to cut you, that is a yeah. very, uh, let me just acknowledge Brother Carbon, you're one of my favorites, brother. I have much respect for you, much, much, much respect. Um, George, you see, and that comes back to one of the things that we keep, um, one of the things that we keep doing, Dominica. We keep expecting the government to do those things. Uh, that mm -hmm. is a false premise. We shouldn't even... We should not even work on that premise. You know, the electoral reform, for instance. Forget whether the government is going to give you that. You have to organize to make sure that happens yourself. And so it comes back to the same thing again, George. Citizenship empowerment is the key. It's the key. No government is going to work against their interests. You have to ensure they work in your interests, not them. Not them. And that's what's plaguing Dominica. The citizens are not involved 
in their own development. They're not involved. They're waiting on the government to do for them. But you have to dictate the government much more in Dominica. Yeah, so um, your point is taken. I just want to highlight Marceline Edwards. Once again, good evening. She says, sorry, great discussion. The legal fraternity needs to represent on the issues of governance of we the people, since they are also part of we the people. Marceline Edwards, I did outline some of the plans and objectives of the Committee of Concerned Lawyers in representing Dominicans against the system as far as legal issues are concerned. I also stated that CCL, Committee of Concerned Lawyers, will be going on the ground to discuss legal issues of importance. Marceline Edwards, why is it every instance is always the poor people of average Dominican in the streets protesting with a very absent middle class and professionals on issue of country? Well, I don't know what Zed would say to that, but I believe that um, that uh, the answer the answer to that is very simple. Zed, you saw the question, right? <laughs> answer it, Josh. <laughs> Everybody fears of losing something. <laughs> because in Dominica has become transactional. Yeah. It's ideology or philosophy. So where you have a conscious brother like Zed, philosophical and ideological and standing for something, most Dominican now, now seem to be, have become very superficial and lack ideology. And it's about what we can get or what we expect to get. And furthermore, victimization is real in Dominica. Yeah, it is. Public servants in particular are fearful of being conspicuous in their dissent against this government out of fear of political reprisals. They fear of getting victimized. And that's understanding because in a hard economic developing country like Dominica, where people's savings are limited and their options, the economic options are few, they tend to traverse the roads very carefully and meticulously, and therefore they do not want to be seen associated with a force against the government. So Marcelin, that explains why so many Dominicans may, may disagree with the government, but fear going on the streets, especially now we have a practice where police officers get to the crowd and they take photographs. So nobody wants to be seen on photographs and videos being placed on the table of the prime minister because they feel that the big boss, the world boss, the, the, the proclaimed world boss will deny them of a scholarship for their children, deny them of assistance to have their relatives in need of medical needs flown out to Dominica, fearful of not getting a job, fearful of not being appointed in the public service, fearful of not getting an NEP job. You know, that's the reality, Zed. You know, in struggle, you find those those conditions are assessed by people who are mature and elderly. I think what the, the, the aspect of the society, the demographic that helps you contradict this kind of thing and counteract it is the youth. And that is what is missing in that in, in Dominica's movement and struggle right now. That spontaneous spark. You see, struggle and solution is a very emotional thing. It's a very emotional thing. And if you have a segment of the population that's already settled in their balanced kind of way, like, it's very hard to get them to be emotionally reactive to struggle. We need to engage the youth. We need to engage the youth. And like I said, I, I'm happy that Josh and his group has um, made that, 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 that commitment to go out and educate the people. Because once we can get these young people more motivated about their, 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 their you know, how they are related to the struggle and the empowerment. And I think from a non-political perspective, it's very important. I think we'll see the difference. And I, I really think we'll see the difference. Josh, I think we can, we can we'll be able to plot a path to show. As you guys educate the people, you will see a rise in the movement in the country. Yeah, well, that is our hope. Yeah. When it comes to education, you have to be prepared to be patient. Yes, yes. It is a long-term process as far as empowerment of a nation is concerned yes you, we really have to get rid of this CO culture in dominica yeah young people being more gravitated towards a booyah music or concert yeah. or parties or drinking and festive festivals yeah. as opposed to what happened in the 70s where people 
had this intellectual desire, where people had this, this thirst to learn, where people wanted to fight for something. When I was a young man in the 80s and 90s, well, I was just a kid in the 80s and, you know, living, leading up to the 90s, I wanted to hear the great orators in Dominica. Sure. I took ears to radios to listen to the Douglases. And um, I, take, I took pleasure in listening to great orators. Yeah. So you find younger people are more interested in music. And sadly to say, sometimes the music that they're interested in are really vulgar. Yeah. So I had to uh, perform a social and intellectual surgery on Dominica and to uproot the type of politics and leadership which have permeated in the lands. When you have a government, a, a, a Labour Party government, that, that thrives on bribery and treating and, and electoral corruption. And if you follow the last uh, campaigns that we have had over the few years, the campaigns really are not based on pushing policies, yeah. deepening the, the sanity of the nation, deepening the thoughtfulness, and looking at things from a multi-sectoral and multi-dimensional way. It is more, as you say, personalization, and more so character assassination. Yeah. And it's more about trying to buy somebody's um, integrity as opposed to helping people to come to a recent decision. But that's a discussion for another time. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, because we have to move on here. Let's look at Bernard Allen's um, contribution. He says, to bring about changes, there must be political will. We must get people into our parliament who seek to pass the laws which work to the benefit of the state, not political parties. The law must be worded so as to give priority to matters dealing with free and fair elections over other matters where persons can be treated on bail, can be released on bail, etc. Sorry, while their cases are pending. Um, yes, yeah, so that's Bernard's um, contribution. We are moving on because we do not have the time to respond to every comment. Chris Bugunu, how can, what does it say, how can you, um, how can you highlight this as duress when you know there are cases in the courts pending for decades? Don't you believe that it's time to expedite the process? And we have Ned Packett, the former candidate young man from Grand Bay for the Grand Bay constituency on the United Workers Party ticket election 2019. I have not seen this young man in quite a long time, so it's really refreshing to see him here with us on this platform. That is Ned. And he says here, yeah, so much information and very little action has always been the great defeater of political and or socioeconomic Josh, your audio is gone. Josh, are you there? We lost you, brother. Okay. 
Oh, man. 